Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. Our last video was on the learnings for the Indian Air Force to upgrade 260 plus fleet of Su-30 MKIs with latest radar warning receiver, missile approach warning system coupled up with latest jamming pod to prepare them for future conflict. But what we'll be discussing today is not the learning but a matter of concern for Indian Navy which must be addressed or else it can seriously cripple the Indian Navy's operational capability. Indian Navy is heavily relying on Ukraine's Zoria engine to power most of its warship. The Zoria Research and Development Center is very close to a military airbase which is under the conflict zone of Russia and Ukraine and could be target of Russian missiles or shelling. Close to 34 warships of Indian Navy use the gas turbine from Zoria as their primary source of propulsion. These ships include V-class missile corvettes, surviving Rajput-class destroyers, Delhi-class destroyers, Talwar-class frigates and newly commissioned Vishakhapatnam-class destroyers. Four more frigates of Russian design is under construction at shipyards in Russia and Goa also use engines from Zoria facility. To power all these warships, Indian Navy needs more than 130 marine gas turbine engines and few spare turbines. Besides, Navy is also going to face problem in overhauling or regular maintenance of these engines. Usually, a gas turbine is overhauled after running for close to 30,000 hours. This process is also very challenging as India needs to send turbine back to Ukraine for maintenance. To overcome this problem, a cooperation agreement was signed between BHEL and Zoria, Ukraine at New Delhi on 16th November 2021. The agreement aimed to cooperate for establishing a local manufacture of the Marine GTs and RGs for requirement of the Indian Navy. Additionally, the cooperation agreement aims for BHL and Zoria to support the Indian Navy in maintenance as well as repair of Marine GTs and RGs. In the lights of the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the future of this agreement is also grey. Now since we know how serious is this problem, let's try to understand the options Indian Navy has assuming Zoria would not be able to cater the maintenance, overhaul and supply of spares for Indian Navy warship. There are four options that Indian Navy can work it out as a backup which we will be discussing in detail. Russia was also under similar situation following the 2014 Crimean crisis. The Ukrainian industry refused to supply Russia with military technology. As a result, NPO Saturn was commissioned to design indigenous engine for Admiral Goshkov and Admiral Grigovich class frigates. Indian Navy can also go ahead with marine engine developed by NPO Saturn. After the Ukrainian engine, Indian Navy heavily relies on General Electric GELM 2500 marine gas turbine engines. These engines are also integrated with indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant, three Shivali class frigates, seven stealth frigates being built under project 17A. HL is already assembling and testing these engines for project 17A in Bengaluru under license from GE. The turbine overhaul centers would be set up in naval dockyard Vishakhapatnam and Mumbai for these engines. This could be second option for Indian Navy. On May 2021, HAL has also signed a MOU with UK's Rolls-Royce for MT-30 engines. Under this memorandum of understanding, HAL will be providing packaging support and marketing and service support for MT-30 engines. The MT-30 engine is one of the latest marine engines of the Rolls-Royce, which will be used in future vessels, aircraft carriers, frigates or destroyers of Indian Navy. MT-30 is the world's most power-dense, best-in-class naval gas turbine engine 
currently in service with various naval program worldwide across seven different types of ships. This could be third option for the Indian Navy. Now let's talk about the indigenous option. As we have discussed on multiple occasions that Kaveri engine's core is quite stable. DRDO has used the core of Kaveri engine to generate power of 12 megawatts which may not be sufficient to power bigger warships but can power small vessels in the class with a displacement up to 2500 tons. However, these engines have failed in trials conducted by Indian Navy to maintain power output over longer distance and achieve required endurance. It won't be an easy path to mature the Kaveri marine engine and could be a long way to go similar to jet engine and may even require the help from foreign OEMs. But this is much required a strategic approach to achieve this self-sufficiency in defense. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and Jai Hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We will be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in defense sector.